What's up, YouTube? This is iPhone Modder here, and today I'm going to be talking about the features that were announced at WWDC 2011, which was the Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference. Now, I know this did happen on June 6th, but I was so busy this last week, I did not have a chance to make it. But I'm going to be making up for this by making three long and detailed videos on all three specific features and software that were announced at this conference. So first there was iOS 5, Mac OS X Line, and iCloud. This video is going to be going in depth about iOS 5. So now guys, let's just get started. So basically at the keynote, the guy, the Senior Vice President of Product Management at Apple, went over 10 main features that are going to be in this next build of iOS 5. The first one is notifications. So as you know, the notifications on the Apple iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPad right now suck. I've already talked about that. They interrupt, they do a lot of stuff that is not good. So first off, they made a notification center. It is a single place that combines together all notifications and you get it by swiping down from the top, like this. I obviously don't have it right now because I'm not a developer, but if you just want to access your notification center, you just swipe down from the top, kind of like SBS settings if you have that on jailbreaking but obviously nothing's gonna come up right now. Once you're in the notification center, it gives you a couple widgets such as weather and stocks. It also lets you delete some of the notifications that are coming up at the moment, and you can tap on one to access them directly inside of the app. Also, in the middle of an app, there is no more pop-up anymore. For example, when you're in a game and you get a text message and it pops up, you have the option to either open it or close it. Now, I've seen a mobile notifier, you can just have a little tab that pops up on the top and it has a little animation and then it goes away after a while. So you have the option to click on it or not, but it doesn't interrupt your gameplay or whatever else you are doing on your iDevice. Also on your lock screen, as you guys remember before, it had a list of all the notifications, but once you open up your lock screen, you couldn't access them because it wasn't persistent. But now you can just slide to unlock on each of those notifications on your lock screen if you don't have a password. It takes you straight to that notification and you can view all of them. The next feature that they announced was this thing called Newsstand. Now in my opinion, this is primarily used for the iPad, but basically they talked about subscriptions and background downloads. So basically subscriptions is all the new magazines, newspapers, etc. that you subscribe to from the App Store. It all comes in one shelf type thing, so you can just access them immediately. The background downloads mean that when you're asleep and a new issue of the magazine or newspaper comes out, it automatically downloads it and goes on your newsstand so you don't have to do it yourself from the App Store. The next feature they announced, which I did predict in fact, was integrated Twitter. So basically you just need a single sign-on and that's in your settings app. Then every time an app needs your Twitter account, it asks you to confirm that they are allowed to use your Twitter information to post stuff on your so-called wall and then you can proceed. So I think this is really cool. Also, it is integrated in the camera and photos up to post photos and videos directly to your Twitter account. Also, you can add your location, but I advise you not to. Also, you can tweet articles from Safari, videos from YouTube, and etc. And a new feature that I also announced on Twitter is Twitter contacts, which means that the Twitter photo will automatically go into your contacts photo. For example, if someone has a profile picture on Twitter, you can sync your profile pictures with their Twitter to the contact so all the profile pictures on Twitter, if you have a corresponding contact to that profile, get replaced with the current contact photo you have, or if it doesn't have a contact photo, then the profile picture from Twitter adds to your contact photo for whoever person it is. Now it sounds kind of complicated, but you'll get it once it comes out. Next feature, number four, was Safari. So now there's a button called Reader, which now makes it so that you have a way simpler view of reading articles. For example, now the font gets a lot bigger. It basically gets rid of all distractions, such as ads for your viewing pleasure, and you can email your content to the story as well. Another feature they advertise is reading list, which is part of the Safari, and you can save stories to read it later. You can also save a story to read it later across all of your enabled iOS devices. For example, even your Mac that has Safari on it, your iPad, iPod Touch, iPhone, you can save it amongst all those, so then when you can pick up your next device, you can just resume reading from where you left off. Also, now you have tab browsing on the iPad. Now, I love tab browsing. I usually have about 50 to 60 tabs open on all my web browsers. I know that sounds crazy, but I got to keep up to date on my stuff. Tab browsing seems like a really good feature to add to the iPad. Glad they didn't add it to the iPhone. Seems like it would get cluttered, but I'm really looking forward to that. 
Now, number five is reminders. Now, I think this is a pretty simple yet amazing concept. So basically, you can obviously just store a list of things and dates to be reminded at certain times. And you can use your location to set geofences around an area to remind you to call, text, or etc. So let's say you have a soccer game and you're like, okay, I need to call my mom after my soccer game. But you're going to forget so you go to your soccer game, and then once you're driving home, it sets a geofence around the soccer field. And once you exit that geofence, it sends you reminders saying, don't forget to call your mom. Or you can set a time to correspond with that location. And then once you leave the geofence, it says, don't forget to call your mom at 6 p.m. So I think that's really cool because it uses your location integrated with reminders. Next feature is the camera. So I did predict this one as well. The camera app is extensively modified extensively. Now you have a lock screen shortcut so you can double click the home button. A little camera icon shows up next to the unlock slide and it makes the unlock slide a little smaller. You click on that then you have instant access to your camera application and now you can even press up button on the iPhone to snap a quick photo. So you have a physical native photo taking button instead of having to press that stupid on screen camera button. Now you can also edit and modify your pictures just like iPhoto. You can do a lot of things such as pinch and zoom, set exposure locked when a finger is held on screen. This means that sometimes when there's an auto exposure setting on your camera app and you like what all the lights and everything are set at, you just tap and hold on your screen and the setting stays the same so it doesn't change so your photo doesn't get screwed up while you're trying to take it. Also, like I already mentioned, you can edit your photos right on your iPhone, iPad. You can crop, rotate, red-eye reduction, and one-click enhance like the iPhoto. And that is pretty much it for photos. Now, the Mail app is severely revamped as well. So now it has rich text formatting, which means that you can put bold italics, underline, etc. Draggable addresses between BCC and CC. That means that when you put an address to CC someone and you want to change it to BCC, you can just tap and drag to the bottom instead of having to delete it, then retype it all again. And also, you can flag messages now. You have indentations. You can search entire messages on your phone and server, which includes all text. So before, you can just search like the contact. Like, for example, Sandra Johnson. You would search Sandra. But now, let's say Sandra Johnson typed an email saying, Hi, iPhone modder. You can search hi and then every single email that has hi in it will come up even on your phone and even on the server that your mail is saved on so i think that's really cool because it's kind of annoying trying to find emails sometimes also you can swipe to inbox on the ipad which means that you get a full screen of all your mail and then you can just swipe to the left to enable the whole email so you have the best viewing pleasure also there's a built-in dictionary in the entire os i think this is very helpful so like if you want to see what something means find synonyms antonyms it's pretty much a thesaurus also spell correction now this is kind of mimicking windows 8 i don't know who thought of it first but thumb keyboard on the ipad so basically when you have a keyboard on the ipad you can't reach like the center few keys with your thumbs but some people like typing with their thumbs, so that is a kind of a problem. So now all you have to do is just slide across like that, and you get two little separate thumb keyboards that split apart in the edges for your thumb pleasures. Also, you get S-M-I-M-E for encrypted emails. Now, they didn't really talk too much about this, but I assume it's just to send encrypted emails over to other business partners. The eighth feature they announced that they were very excited about was being PC-free. Now, at first, I'm like, okay, this is kind of weird, but basically now you can set up your iDevice without having to hook it up to a computer, and you can even activate it with no need for a computer whatsoever. So basically, when you first get your iDevice, when you purchase it right out of the Apple Store, open it up, you're so ready to use it, and then you turn it on, and what do you see? You see the iTunes logo with the USB going into it. should have a picture somewhere over here. So you basically just have to hook it up to your iTunes, activate it, sync it, blah, blah, blah. Now there is no need for that. This PC-free software eliminates all use for a computer. Next, you can also do over-the-air software updates. Now you might say, oh, well, the updates already take long enough to download from my PC. How the hell am I going to have enough time to download them to my iPhone, iPod Touch, or iPad? Well, basically, they're called Delta updates. So now it just downloads the new features. doesn't download the whole new firmware again, just the new features, which is very effective and conservative. Next, apps do not require computers anymore. 
for example, reminders and stuff, and iCal doesn't have to sync, you don't have to delete or add any calendar notifications from your computer. It's kind of hard to explain, but basically apps just don't require a computer anymore. Next, Game Center. Now you can put photos as your profile picture for Game Center. Apple now recommends friends for you, which I think it's kind of weird, I don't know how they do that. But there's also game recommendations, which is kind of like genius for your games. And now you can even download games directly from Game Center, so you don't have to switch between App Store and Game Center all the time. And it supports turn-based games like Scrabble. For example, in the words with friends and stuff, when like it's your turn, you put down a letter, it's their turn, they put down a letter. This new Game Center now supports this so the developers don't have to go through the hassle of doing it themselves. And the 10th feature that they mention is iMessage. So many of you are familiar with the BlackBerry platform and you guys all know about BlackBerry messaging. So BlackBerry messaging is pretty much free instant messaging or text messaging between BlackBerry devices. Now Apple has brought a similar feature to iOS devices, so messaging service between all iOS 5.0 customers for iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch. So basically it sends text, photos, contacts, group messages, etc. They did show it off with photos and videos, high quality of course, and it does not cost any money, and it goes over Wi-Fi and 3G. I think a really cool thing is that you can see if your information has been delivered, if the person has received it. You can also see if the person has read it, which can cause some controversy. Maybe if the person wants to read it but doesn't want to reply, then you will know that they read it. And you'll basically know, oh, like they're backstabbing me or whatever. And it tells someone when you start to type. For example, if any of you guys use Facebook, when someone starts to type, it shows those dots. This is pretty much the same thing and conversations are saved just like your SMS app if you have an iPhone. Also, all information is encrypted and is sent over the air. Now guys, those are pretty much the 10 major features that Apple announced. I'm just gonna go over a few more. So basically, there was more than 200 features announced overall, and that is a lot in my opinion, but of course, a lot of them are minor. So as most of you guys know, there was an HDMI converter cable announced for the iPad 2, which you can connect it up to your LCD or plasma or LED, whatever. You got television, and you can see all your iPad 2 data, sound etc on your television so I think that was really cool but now it is wireless so now you can just mirror it through your Apple TV of course Apple would require you to have one of those next there is Wi-Fi sync to iTunes I went over this as well in my rumors video Wi-Fi sync is basically syncing your iPhone wirelessly to your computer through the same Wi-Fi network they both have to be connected to the same Wi-Fi network of course and it does it automatically even when you're sleeping it backs up and everything which I think is really amazing of course the only thing you cannot do is a pure factory restore and in my opinion they did copy a lot of these features that I've mentioned including this one from the jailbreaking community because I've used Wi-Fi sync and everything many times. Mobile notifiers pretty much the same as notifications, it just does not have the notification center. But yeah, that guys is pretty much it. They also did announce iPad multitasking gestures, which you guys should all be super excited about if you have an iPad, which means that you can do four or five finger pinch out and it takes you out of the app and into the home screen and do four or five up like that brings up the multitasking bar. Once you're in an app, you can do four or five to the side like so, and then you can switch between your applications. I'm surprised they didn't go too much over that. They just went over quickly. And the developer's 5.0 beta one is available starting June 6, which is already passed. So guys, I'm not gonna tell you how to get that. You have to be a developer. Of course, there is some illegal ways, but of course, I'm a legal person, so I'm not gonna discuss this. Also, this is going to be released this fall, and it is going to support the iPhone 3GS, iPhone 4, iPod Touch 3G, iPod Touch 4G, iPad 1, as well as the iPad 2. I'm so happy it supports the iPhone 3GS and iPod Touch 3G because I have the iPhone 3GS, as you can kind of see here. But there is going to be limited functionality. Not limited, but as you guys remember, iOS 4.0, the iPhone 3G did receive not as much functionality as the iPhone 4 or iPhone 3GS. So this is kind of a downside, but it is better than nothing. Hopefully it's not too slow like it was on the iPhone 3G, but we're just going to have to see. So guys, remember, check out my iCloud and Mac OS X line videos that should be up within a few days. I'm sorry this took me such a long time. I should have links in the description to those videos once they are up. Also, I just want to announce that I am officially a YouTube partner. 
thank you very much to all my subscribers that have supported me this last few months that I've started making a lot of professional videos, I call them. And guys, just remember to leave a comment or suggestion in the moderator module on my channel on youtube.com slash iPhone modder. Instead of a PH in iPhone, it's an F. Remember to leave a comment down below, like this video, favorite if you want, and ultimately, have a nice day.